Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A sale set up via social media turns violent overnight. One person is recovering after being shot this morning. Just ahead with the Bear County Sheriff's Office is revealing about the suspects who are still on the loose. Ohio voters reject a measure that would raise the threshold to amend that state's constitution months before a crucial vote on abortion rights access. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with that story from Washington. And looking out there with live cam this Wednesday morning, 80 degrees, we are preparing for another hot day. And a good morning to you. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, August 9th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, another record breaking day yesterday. No doubt about that. And I want to check in with Mike Osterhage uh, and see how you did on the lotto last night. <laughs> no. No, 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 unfortunately. So okay. I was not that didn't purchase my ticket down in Florida. So anyway, yeah, we did hit the record yesterday, 105. And um, I was just doing looking through some of the statistics for the past month. We have been at 100 or above since the 8th of August, mm -hmm. except for two days, 22nd and or 23rd and the 29th, 99. Move, move over, Phoenix. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so and and racking up the 105s, that's going to continue as well. And of course, as time rolls on, then the fire danger just continues to get worse as we continue to uh, to dry out. We've got clear skies starting off as of right now, and we've got temperatures that are pretty much where they have been the past a couple of mornings. We are in the upper 70s, some low 80s. Humidity. Is there, although it is down a little bit more pleasant in 69. Sure does beat yesterday's 72, 73 here in town. Now that may fluctuate a couple of degrees, but then we still have humidity around Canyon Lake as well as New Braunfels. So heat index 86 Canyon Lake, 85 out there at New Braunfels, 84 at the airport. Slow amount of mold came down from the previous day's reading. Another yellow day for CPS Energy. Find out ways to conserve. You can scan that QR code right there. Excessive heat warnings remain in effect. Pretty much the, the same same outlook or same pattern on this map, I should say, as far as the advisories and the warnings. But this map, the red flag warnings have been expanded, covering almost all of our viewing area, with the exception of a few counties down here to the southeast. But extremely high fire danger. Burn bans remain in effect basically everywhere, with a couple of minor exceptions. But just any outdoor burning, please forget about that. Throughout the rest of today, 93 at noon, yep, 105. Another very, very hot day. Will we see any sort of a change way down the road? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A Facebook marketplace sale took a violent turn last night, leaving one of two brothers injured with multiple gunshot wounds. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, it happened just after 9 p.m. near Highway 281 South and Hume Road. Deputies say two people believed to be brothers met with buyers to sell black Dodge Charger on Facebook Marketplace. Now, during the sale, one brother was shot multiple times and taken to a hospital in unknown condition. BCSO says the other brother was not hit by gunfire. Victims told deputies the group of four got away with the Charger but did not know what other vehicle they were driving. Officials remind the public to take precautions during in-person transactions by going to well-lit areas or even police stations. Bear County deputies are also investigating two shootings on the county's northeast side that left at least two people injured. Those shootings happened just before 9 last night in the 6700 block of Montgomery Drive. Deputies at the scene said a man in his 20s was shot in that gunfire. His condition is unknown this morning. Sheriff's deputies also say that another man was believed to be shot in the hand with a non-life-threatening injury. It is official. A burn ban is now in place here in Bear County. Heavy rain is not in the long-range forecast. That combined with high winds has forced commissioners to pass the ban. People can still get rid of waste in burn barrels, but they must have mesh screens to stop sparks from starting a fire. Anybody who violates the ban could get a $500 fine. The ban lasts through November 7th. Another major wildfire is threatening an apartment complex fire near Austin. Now, this is in Cedar Park. KTBC in Austin reports one building is destroyed and two others are damaged. Firefighters have evacuated that apartment complex, a nearby housing development, and neighboring businesses. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, it's about 50 acres in size, and it's about 15% contained this morning. Now the results of an Ohio special election with major implications for abortion access in that state. Voters rejected issue one, a proposal that would have required raising the threshold to amend the state's constitution. 
And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the Republican-backed measure was fast-tracked to ballots three months before a key vote on whether to enshrine abortion rights in Ohio. This morning, issue one failing in Ohio. The Republican supported ballot question would have called for a 60% supermajority to make changes to the state's constitution instead of a simple majority. With nearly all ballots counted, close to 60% of voters rejecting that measure. Ohio Republicans putting issue one to the people just before November, when voters are set to decide whether to enshrine abortion rights into the state constitution. The constitution is under attack and we want to protect the Constitution in Ohio. It was important to protect my rights, especially as a woman and, you know, the abortion protection. So I wanted to vote no today. In Columbus, the bipartisan coalition group, one person, one vote, celebrating. Ohioans will have a say when the number comes. And we will vote yes. The president of the anti-abortion rights organization, Ohio Right to Life, stopping short of conceding defeat on CNN. Look, this was a battle worth having. We needed to have a, a decision with the state of Ohio, all 88 counties. The anti-abortion rights Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America group calling the issue one outcome a sad day for Ohio and a warning for pro-life states across the nation. The group also blaming outside money for the defeat, even though both sides benefited from that spending. From the White House, President Biden slammed issue one as an attempt to weaken voters' voices, saying Ohioans spoke loud and clear, and tonight democracy won. Before polls opened Tuesday, nearly 700,000 Ohioans voted early. Soon after last year's Supreme Court decision overturning abortion rights protections, Kansas voters rejected an anti-abortion amendment in that state. Since the high court's decision, more than a dozen states have passed near or total abortion bans. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. President Joe Biden plans to visit Vietnam soon, and that's according to comments he made at a campaign reception in Albuquerque, New Mexico yesterday. Biden said the visit is an effort to change the United States relationship with the Southeast Asian nation. This comes as his administration tries to counter China's influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Last year, Biden and several leaders there launched the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework during a visit to Tokyo. Millions of Americans hope to become a billionaire off of Mega Millions, and someone did, just not in Texas last night. Mega Millions Lottery says one winning ticket for last night's jackpot was sold in Neptune Beach, Florida, east of Jacksonville. The jackpot was worth an estimated $1.58 billion, the largest in the lottery's history. Seven other tickets sold in six states won the consolation prize. That includes Texas, where million-dollar tickets were sold in Austin and the El Paso suburb of Socorro. Time now is 438 and 80 degrees for now. Up next, how all kinds of businesses, restaurants, to IT, to the beauty industry are getting a boost from the Maestro Center. And a quick check of the roads with Transguy looking over at Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Things are moving there. Uh, Stephen Cavazos is in the building. We're going to be checking in with him in the next half hour. And outside with live cam, the relentless heat continues here in South Central Texas. Mike goes to will be along a little bit later on in the newscast. 441 from restaurants to IT to the beauty industry. All kinds of local businesses have gotten a boost from what's called the Maestro Center. So 12 on your science, Marilyn Moritz checks back in with one entrepreneur who's selling self-confidence one lipstick at a time. When I had my Easy Bake Oven, I was selling the cakes that I made. Um, I would sell candy um, to my classmates. So I think it's kind of always been in me. Now Darinette Curtis sells honey bun, lollipop, and strawberry tart lipsticks. And she does it with sparkle and shine. Her brand is Love Muffin, spelled with kisses. And the X's are for kisses because lipstick, so. <laughs> Curtis whipped up her formula for vegan smudge-proof liquid lipstick some eight years ago, but she credits Maestro Entrepreneur Center for refining her formula for success. Always prided myself on customer service, but really having someone come in and, and, and put the value on how you make your customers feel 
um, really stood out to me because I want you to feel pretty in my lipsticks. I want you to feel good about yourself. Since Maestro's program, she says business has grown. I think we're up to 18 lipsticks. We have five lip glosses now. And she's launching an inclusive campaign for the Muffin Man. She sells through her website, but she says she has interested retailers. Two years ago, when we first met Curtis, she told us her dream. I really just want to walk down the street and know that someone's wearing my lipstick. And now she is getting there, evidenced by the conversation she recently overheard. Oh, no, you need to try this lipstick. You need to try this lip gloss. Um, and I'm just in the back kind of like, OK, you did. Uh, you don't know that's me, but I'll, you know, I'll just let you enjoy it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. In time now, 443 and 80 degrees for now. There are quite a few fears that artificial intelligence will take jobs. Up next, how local small business is using the technology to its benefit. More people are taking the diabetes drug Ozempic for weight loss. And up next, why some women say they are now being publicly shamed for using it. Hi, welcome back. It is 446. Many women are facing criticism for taking the diabetes drug Ozempic for weight loss. ABC's Ariel Rochef has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, as more and more people take the diabetes drug Ozempic for weight loss, we're hearing from users who say they were shamed for using it. She's the feisty attorney turned castmate of the Real Housewives of Orange County. You are two different people, Shannon. But Emily Simpson says behind her bold persona on the show was depression linked to her battle with her weight. I went to the doctor and she said, oh, there's this new weight loss drug. It's a semaglutide. I think you should try it. You would probably lose some weight. So she started taking Ozempic, but she says she soon faced very public shaming. And coming up at 7 a.m., more from patients who say they have faced backlash. And Dr. Jen Ashton joins us to discuss newly released data from a clinical trial on the weight loss drug Wigovi's potential heart health benefits. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef. ABC News, New York. Artificial intelligence could replace 300 million jobs. That's according to a report by investment bank Goldman Sachs. Max Assey shows how local small businesses are using AI to be more efficient without cutting jobs. The name of my company is the Entrepreneur World. We develop entrepreneurial skills in college students in the United States and Latin America. Meet Washington Navarro, a small business owner who uses generative AI to make the entrepreneurial world better. What we learned really quick is how to utilize it and how to implement it in our benefit. Artificial intelligence, or AI, it might seem complicated, it might seem overwhelming, but odds are it's already been integrated in your day-to-day -day lives. I think that it's important for people to recognize that, yes, generative AI is the latest and greatest version of AI and technology, but this technology has been integrated into the world since the early 2000s in a very recognizable way. Ivy Vasquez Sandoval is a robot software engineer at Plus One Robotics, a company using AI since its inception. What AI is attempting to do is it's a mathematical approach, a programmatic approach to mimicking a singular task that humans do or a small subset of tasks that humans perform. Generative AI, like ChatGPT, is used for efficiency and speed. Kind of menial task at the moment. Uh, we anticipate that, you know, that obviously is going to grow as, as time moves forward. Um, but right now, it's sort of like we're not seeing that big of an impact just yet. Workforce Solutions Alamo hasn't seen AI replacing jobs, but they do urge people to start thinking about the future. If you don't have certifications, if you don't have marketable skills, if you don't have the ability to sort of kind of continuously sort of learn and continuously move along with the market, then you may be one of those individuals that actually is going to be potentially replaced uh, by AI. As for Washington, he has advice for anyone who's been reluctant with technology. Just be curious. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And a quick check the roads with trans guys looking over at Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road where things are moving and doesn't appear to be too many problems, just construction and it's early so construction is not too bad right now. Mike, you went a few bucks last night? You went in uh, any? Uh, I don't no, nothing. 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 Nothing this time. Unfortunately, so. Okay. Not yet. When, when it comes to AI, when is the company just going to come out either as a joke or just and call it Skynet? Mm. It's just cut right to the chase here. So. Right, and if you're missing the reference, it's from the sci-fi movie uh, Terminator. When computers took over. So. Right, right. Anyway, um, look at this little guy. I mean, this, this kind of sums it up. I don't think I've seen 
any of these uh, splooting squirrel pictures where he is just splayed out That's like that. That's a full-on sploot, Mike. No kid. Yeah. Front and back legs, too. Poor little guy. Yeah, it's cooking out there, and it is not going to change throughout at least the next week. I'm subtle little change, but nothing, nothing substantial at all. Over there by uh, 10 at 410, we got a lot of clear skies right now. You can see downtown very nice. So we are at 44 days as of yesterday, and we're just going to continue to rack these up. So we will definitely be moving into the 50 count by, well, the next six days at least, and then continue on into next week as well. So we're definitely going to be uh, moving up in the uh, number of triple digit days for the season. Temperatures will same temperature profile as yesterday, make it up into the 80s through the morning hours, 93 at noon, and then top off going for 105 again today. Record yesterday set a record two days in Roanoke, it was 104. Record today is 106. So, yes, it's going to be close to it. Um, I don't know if it really matters if you actually hit a record. It's just brutally, brutally hot out there. Satellite, obviously, nothing is showing up as of right now. And like yesterday, we still have, you can see this flow going just about straight west to east, uh, right up to the north of us, just beyond arm's reach. Even in Oklahoma, even in North Texas, there are a couple of showers. But all this is going to be working its way in toward the Mid-South. So if you have any travel plans, say going through Memphis, going through Nashville, you definitely want to uh, check ahead with that because they are in store for some pretty nasty storms there. But again, nothing is changing overall. We'll still have those little subtle changes coming in next week as far as temperatures maybe down a couple of notches, but nothing Nothing really substantial in the forecast at all. So again, each and every day, the fire danger will continue to get worse because, of course, we have the red flag warnings and the excessive heat warnings in here because we continue everything. I don't know if it can get any drier, but we still have those breezes that kind of pop up just as the sun is setting. And that's when the fire danger really gets high because the humidity goes down as well. But look at that triple digits, 105s all the way through most of the weekend, maybe down a couple of notches going into the first part of next week. Wow, 102 looks a lot better. Even yeah, though it's just a few degrees. You know, perhaps a, a sea breeze shower along the coast sometime next week, but that that's all you can really hope for with this forecast. Nothing else significant in the Gulf nope. whatsoever. Nothing. The long-term model. Nope. That that high sitting on top of us just is not going to move. That thing is stubborn. Oh goodness! All right, we'll yeah. we'll deal with it. Thank you, Mike. Mother Nature's got us on cap lock with that H right now. 452, 80 degrees. Up next, a first look at all the nominations for Taylor Swift is up for at the upcoming MTV Movies Awards. And can you guess which song is up for Song of the Year? Five till five, Taylor Swift already sweeping the MTV Video Music Awards. Plus, fans remember Sinead O'Connor. For the latest, what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Taylor Swift getting the most MTV VMA nominations Tuesday. Eight nods, including Video of the Year for the song Antihero, which is also up for Song of the Year and more. And Swift is a nominee for Artist of the Year. MTV says a record setting 35 artists are first time nominees, including Ice Spice, Pink Pantheris, and Kim Petras. The other Artist of the Year nominees, All Women, Beyonce, Doja Cat, Carol G, Nicki Minaj, and Shakira. The VMAs air September 12th. Mourners gathered in Sinead O'Connor's former hometown of Bray, Ireland to pay respects as her funeral procession passed by Tuesday. A private funeral was held for the singer. In attendance, U2's Bono and The Edge, Bob Geldof, as well as Irish President Michael D. Higgins. O'Connor died last month at the age of 56. So far, no cause of death has been revealed. Baby number three coming for singer Sierra and her Denver Broncos QB husband, Russell Wilson. She made the announcement on Instagram, then showed up to watch her husband at training camp. Yeah, man, it's exciting. Obviously, uh, what a blessing it is. You know, as, as many of you know, having children is the greatest gift in the world. The two have a six-year-old daughter and three-year-old son, and she has a nine-year-old from a previous relationship. And Pitch Perfect and Up in the Air star Anna Kendrick is 38 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 80 degrees. For a San Antonio team responsible for a deadly shooting at a Martin Luther King Jr. celebration last year gets a 45-year sentence. Up next, what's next for O.L. Wallace? Plus, we'll show you the moments leading up to the heart-pounding rescue of a newborn baby all caught on camera. And ahead on GMSA at 6, credit card debt has hit a new record across the U.S. We're going to look at why and what people are doing to pay it off. 
At Checking Trends, Guy, we've had overnight construction and we have some flashing lights. 90 at Meadow Creek. We'll sort things out with Stephen coming up after this break. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It is a 45 year sentence for a San Antonio teen responsible for a deadly shooting. Up next, when O.L. Wallace will be eligible for parole. Plus an emotional rescue of a newborn caught on camera. The baby, the baby Up next, how an officer performing a traffic stop helped save the baby's life. And the extreme heat has us all shedding a tear or two. Taking a live look downtown this morning, we've made it to midweek. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, August 9th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're having a good week so far. But what's been interesting is the evenings usually I'm like, okay, evenings are a little better. I mean, they are because the sun's not out, but even that breeze is like really hot. Yes, uh, a hot air dryer on full blast, Mike Osterhage? Yeah, basically, and that's when the, the highest fire danger occurs, too, because we get those breezes that do pick up as the... the heating of the afternoon starts to wane a little bit and of course we have the lowest humidity at that time and yeah it does feel like a, a hair dryer or just a fan blowing out from the oven 80 right now the dew points at 69 that's actually down about three four degrees compared to this time yesterday so slightly more pleasant when you step outside the heat index is only at 83 right now we are going to hit 105 again today we continue to chalk those up yesterday was a record today is going to be just one degree shy that because the record is 106 and as far as the aquifer yesterday it uh, well no change it was a push I mean we'll take that didn't go down at least we wanted to go the opposite direction but that's not going to happen anytime soon mold is on the the low side heat index readings all around the area as of right now 84 up the road in Canyon Lake all these numbers are actually down just ever so slightly from where they were at this time yesterday I mean it's still very warm out there it was still above normal that 80 degrees is still about four above where we should be mold is on the low side of course we do have have the excessive heat warnings, uh, the dark shade of pink and the heat advisories through the evening hours. The red flag warnings. This has actually been expanded to include all of our southern counties and only just a few of these counties down here to the southeast are not included in this. But basically the high fire danger everywhere. And of course, we've got burn bans pretty much in every county in our viewing area. Just a couple not in that, but just any outdoor burning is not recommended at all because of those tender dry conditions. 93 at noon, 105, like I said, for high temperature today. Wind will start to, it's that hot breeze later on in the afternoon, southeasterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We're going to take a look ahead into next week to see if anything at all will be changing. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Anything problem-wise on the roads yet? Well, uh, construction is always a problem for a lot of folks. Mike, good morning to you. And if you're waking up, thankfully, some good news to report here along US 90 at Meadow Creek. You saw some flashing lights as you went to commercial break, and that is because we had a full closure overnight here along US 90. Those eastbound lanes were closed off due to some work that crews were out there repairing. But you could see there, uh, we're not spotting any delays in the eastbound lanes. It's actually from Loop 410 to Springvale, according to TxDOT. Now, this work has already wrapped, but we see a little bit of yellow that is stretched out there in the westbound lane. So uh, that's just normal traffic. I have not seen any major incidents to report as of yet, but I'll keep a close eye on the area and keep you posted. Let's take a drive over here. So uh, 1604, it has been a big topic. We still have this full closure, folks. Loop 1604 westbound main lanes are closed there from Kyle Seal Parkway to Braun Road. Now, crews should be in the clearing stages of this project, but remember, uh, we did see some delays over over the weekend due to material issues. That's according to TxDOT. But I did talk to our friends over there and it does look like this work will continue all the way up through Thursday morning. So I would say it's best to avoid that area overnight, uh, but we should see it open up for the weekend. Giving you a wide look at the map, no other issues to report as of yet. We are still seeing some of the construction spots that we can look forward to a little bit later today. But if it should be uh, all green if you're coming into the Alamo City this early in the morning. I-10 eastbound, that journey from Bernie should be about 25 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound, if you are traveling in from Bulverde, it's a 26-minute commute. And right now, the drive time from New Braunfels should be about 27 minutes along I-35 southbound. And again, it does look like the work here is in the clearing stages along US-90 eastbound, but I still see some of those flashing lights out there way off in the distance. Just be on the lookout for those crews and I'll have more updates for you coming up a little bit later on. Mark. 
Thank you, Steve. And a jury spent hours to come up with a 45 year sentence for a San Antonio teen who was accused uh, rather responsible for a deadly shooting in an MLK celebration last year. Ola Wallace fired into a crowd at Santa's place on the east side on January 17th, 2022, killing 61 year old Johnny Mobley and injuring four others. Eric Hernandez takes us inside the courtroom for his sentencing and what's next for him. Waving a gun around and flashing gang signs, these videos found on O.L. Wallace's phone were shown to the jury during testimony in the punishment phase. A portion of his interrogation video previously omitted shows Wallace admitting his gang affiliation. Who are you playing with? Which one? Blood, Crips, what? All of this new testimony and evidence shown to the jury after they found him guilty of the murder of Johnny Mobley on Monday. Mobley was at the Santa's Place MLK Day celebration on the east side on January 17, 2022, when gunfire broke out and he was hit twice, killing him. While the defense asked the jury for a five-year sentence, the minimum, the state asking for 50 years, saying that Mobley left behind so much and his loss still affecting his family. It was one of the hardest things that could have happened to me. I don't think that's fair that he died the way that they did. It, it wasn't his time. Wallace will soon be transferred to a Texas prison and has to serve half of his sentence before he is eligible for parole. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Now to an update on a South Side fire to multifamily home that left three adults and two young children without a place to live. It happened last week. Since then, all the tenants living in the 100 block of West Lubbock Street had to start over. Brenda Esparza says 19 years of memories living at her home was gone in minutes. She tells us if it wasn't for a neighbor knocking on doors, her family would not be intact today. It's sad because it's just a lot of memories and the whole family was here and because we lost everything. And my daughter lost everything, all her memories. Now they're relying on others. As far as I add, extra school supplies have come in just in time thanks to community support. As for the cause of the fire, San Antonio fire investigators are still trying to figure that out. More students are going back to school today and students from Idea Public Schools, Lytle, Pleasanton and South San return this morning. And tomorrow, Bernie ISD students are back for a full list of when other districts in our area start school. You can visit KSAT.com. It is super exciting to have them come back and I think it's going to be a great year. As IDEA Public Schools welcome back students today, every student will get the chance to have free breakfast and lunch for the entire school year. IDEA Public Schools is part of the community eligibility provision under the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program. These federally funded programs provide money to schools and that money is used to feed students. All 19,000 kids within IDEA's 30 schools will get free breakfast and lunch every day. The most important meal of the day is breakfast. That is going to help them learn, focus in the classroom, and soak up that education for the day. No action is needed from families for their child to be able to get the free meals. Now to New Mexico and the dramatic rescue of a newborn who came into the world during some tense moments. Thankfully, one police officer was in the right place at the right time. And as ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, it all started with a traffic stop when the father ran a red light. In New Mexico, a heart-pounding rescue of a newborn caught on camera. It all started with the mom going into labor and the dad speeding to the hospital. She's like, hey, like, so I, I feel like the back to the baby coming. I can feel his head, you know, pushing. And I was like, okay, like. Just hold on. We're almost there. Just hold on. So I was, you know, I was going a decent speed, you know. State police officer Ismael Perez sees Miguel run a red light and tries to pull him over just as he turns into the hospital. He pulls in behind me and I get out as quickly as I can. I'm like, hey, like my son is on the seat. My son's on the seat. Open the door. I see a, a newborn baby on the seat uh, laying there motionless. Miguel's wife had given birth in the car, but the umbilical cord was compressed and the baby wasn't breathing. <laughs> Officer Perez begins patting the baby's back, trying to clear his throat. There we go, Miko. There we go. Breathe, Miko. Officer Perez then hands the baby over to the nurses, disinfects his hands, and congratulates the new dad. It's a boy. Congrats, brother. Thank you. All in a day's work for the father of three. 
I have three kids of my own. It was definitely a beautiful moment and I'm happy to, to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just glad the baby's okay. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 509, 79 degrees. Apple is planning to make an interesting switch in its latest iPhone software update. Up next, how the in call button is changing. Plus how Google is making its messages between Android users more secure. And looking out there with live cam, we could be breaking more records today and through the rest of the week. We're going to be checking in with Mike for all of that coming up. 513, Apple's latest software update includes a big change to the iPhone's phone app. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has all the details for you in this morning's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a big change coming for iPhone users. Apple is moving the button that ends calls. The iOS 17 update out this fall will place the red end call button in the lower right corner of the screen instead of the center. Another change coming to the iPhone includes a more accurate autocorrect. Next, Google Messages will now be encrypted by default when messaging between Android devices. That level of protection was previously an option, but now it is set to be the default. Text messages between Android and iPhone users will still not have encryption. And WhatsApp has introduced a new feature to improve video calls. Screen sharing will allow users to share documents, photos, and other information. It also allows WhatsApp to be used in a similar fashion to Zoom, Google Meet, and other video conferencing apps. Guess that means if you use WhatsApp for conference calls, you can't zoom in. Those are your tech bites. Haha. <laughs> Time now, 514 and 79 degrees for now. I love these slightly delayed response from Steph. <laughs> uh, outside with uh, Trans Guide right now, 90 at Meadow Creek. We love this wide shot of all the uh, travel lanes there, including part of the frontage road. We'll see if there are any trouble spots out there other than our routine construction. Steven's coming up. I'm your overly competitive brother. Check. Psych. <laughs> and I'm about to steal this game from you. Just like I stole Kelly Carter in high school, huh? You got no game. Dude, that's a foul. And now you're ready to settle a score. Game over. <laughs> and if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, well, you can end up paying for all this yourself. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem. Yeah, like me. Thanks, bro. Take a lap, rookie. Real mature. It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, unsystematic diarrhea. Pepto-Bismol coats and soothes for fast relief when you need it most. NFL Plus brings you the NFL preseason. He is incredible. Rookie debuts and a first look at every team. Caught by Kelsey. Touchdown. Never miss a play with NFL Plus. Sign up today. Welcome back. Just about 518. Good morning, Stephen Cavazos. Hey, good morning, hey. Mark, Steph, Mike. How mm -hmm. are you all? Good. We're good. good. Thank you. Hey, I'm doing a little bit better today. We're talking about some of those projects that happened overnight mm -hmm. uh, that took us by surprise along Loop 1604. You know, an update here, folks. We're going to see that work continue all the way up through Thursday morning. So uh, it's going to take place during the week. But the good news is we don't see a lot of people overnight. Uh, point in case, I mean, we could take a look here at TransGuide and really not see anybody out there. Uh, 281 at Hildebrand, it looks like a quiet shot. And for the most part, the morning commute has been off to an easy start. And as uh, we saw earlier, there were some overnight concerns construction spots and crews have already wrapped up the project. But obviously the big case, uh, the big talking point was right over here along Loop 1604 heading westbound. We saw full main lane closure there overnight and that's going to continue all the way up to th Thursday. As I just mentioned, this is from Kyle Seal Parkway all the way to Braun Road and you saw a little bit of a, a stretch of red that's building out there. So I'll keep a close eye on this, but according to TechSot, this should wrap by five in the morning on Thursday. But just a quick reminder, this is part of that North expansion project. Project. And what you can expect is to see some of those lanes expand to 10, and that should help reduce travel time by 50%. As I mentioned, over the last few days, we have five segments that are planned, and that's from Bandera Road to I-35, roughly about 23 miles. Three of those segments are currently under construction. That stretch from Bandera to US-281. We have a full article on our website that I just updated yesterday with uh, new details. So scan this QR code, and it takes you directly to our traffic page. You can read all about the 1604 North Expansion Project, but not just that other closures that could impact your commute uh, and again the only thing you can really think of is all these crews out there overnight and hopefully they're finding some relief at night as opposed to during the daytime Mike 
Yes, indeed. Yeah, I can't imagine working outside. It's tough enough walking across the parking lot at the uh, the grocery store. All right, here's an interesting picture. And I'm sun brewed tea. 20 minutes. I'm kind of surprised it took that long in this heat, but. Yeah, that's a uh, well, at least you don't have to heat something up in the kitchen to brew that tea. Yeah, you just want to avoid using the stove, using the oven, anything like that. Anything will help out inside. We've got a lot of clear skies right now. 10 over there at 410. No problems on the roads either. All right, 105 or better. We've racked up 10 days so far this year far and away more than any other year. So yeah, it's a, if you think it's been a hot summer, you're right. It has definitely been a hot summer. At least the humidity is down somewhat this morning, down about 10 degrees in Uvalde compared to this time yesterday, down four here in town. So it's a little more comfortable. And again, that's the, the one benefit. But then on the flip side of that, that's what causes uh, or helps contribute to, I should say, the high fire danger is low humidity in the afternoon. We're going to make it up to 93 today at noon, and then we will continue with that graphic to rack up those numbers. Going to be up to 105 again today. The record is 106, obviously close to it. That's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the week and going into next week. Of course, the humidity drops down, like I said, in the afternoons, and when that does, the relative humidity, then that increases the high fire danger, plus as the wind starts to pick up in the evening hours. Temperatures around the country, I mean, look at that, 36 degrees cooler in International Falls than it is in Dallas right now, which is at 86 degrees, not far behind Phoenix at 91. Now, the high, which is, again, sitting right on top of us, that thing doesn't move. The focus is up here to the north, and this is kind of early signs of fall when you get these little fronts moving on through here, these waves. Nothing is going to be changing going into the weekend and then the first part of the week again we've been talking about this one trough which is going to dig pretty good that's going to be a pretty substantial one but this thing is still hanging in here tough so it's really not going to push it out of the way we'll see temperatures drop a couple of degrees here and there but it's really not going to do much for us that trough will continue to move on out off to the uh, northeast and the high still stays in place and it's going to keep it's like a shoving match, if you will, but it's going to keep everything too far up there to the north of us. So with that thing not moving, nothing really changes. I mean, subtle changes by next week, but still triple digit temperatures, 105s all the way through the rest of this week. And then 104 Sunday, maybe down to 102 by Tuesday. Still well above normal. And that's the last, by the way, Tuesday is the um, oh, Wednesday, pardon me, is the 16th getting my dates wrong here, the last day of the normal high temperatures being 97. So yeah. historically, we cooled wow. down after that. Okay. Yeah. I, I mentioned Phoenix earlier. They've had it worse than this most of the summer. I just right. can't even imagine 110 or higher for days and days and days and days and days. Yeah. Del Rio, yeah. right? I think it was Yeah, they've, they've been right <laughs> well and, and around here, too. So it's just, I mean, just even walking outside, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, you feel that, that heat bear down on you and, and electric bills, everything like that. So it's, it's a tough summer, and it's not coming to an end anytime. Soon. All right, we'll power through. Thank you, Mike. 523, 79 degrees. Up next, a first look at the Musebuster Stallone documentary, plus a preview of the sequel to Talk to Me. A lot of numbers, pick three and Mega Millions. There we go. Pick three, <laughs> 493, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 5726, Fireball 8. And cash 5, 1, 3, 12, 22, 35. There are your Mega Millions again, 13, 19, 20, 32, 33, Mega Ball 14, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Sylvester Stallone is heading to a big film festival, not as Rocky or Rambo, but as himself. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Do I have regrets? Hell yeah, I have regrets. The Toronto International Film Festival has chosen Sly, a documentary about Sylvester Stallone as its closing night film. The movie, which traces Stallone's filmography and his personal journey, will unspool at the festival September 16th and debut on Netflix in November. What if we open the door but we didn't shut it? Talk to Me has opened a door at A24. The horror film had one of the studio's biggest opening weekends ever, so A24 has already announced a sequel from the same filmmakers. The title for the second film, Talk To Me. Did I do something wrong? Do you ever wonder who you'd be if you were an anonymous person in the world? I have no idea what you're talking about. You're as thick as it gets. 
Sons of Privilege go from rancor to romance in red, white, and royal blue, based on the best-selling novel. When the U.S. president's son and Britain's Prince of Wales are feuding, it endangers diplomatic relations between their countries. But when sparks of a different sort fly, that brings its own problems. Red, white, and royal blue debuts Friday on Prime Video. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 527, 79 degrees. Chrysler is recalling thousands of its vehicles. Up next, what the problem is and which models are affected. And since almost all of us are tired of the summer heat, how about some pumpkin spice donuts? <laughs> Just to have the new flavors Krispy Kreme is putting out today to get us looking forward to the cooler fall temperatures whenever. At least two tornadoes tear through parts of the Northeast and in parts of Oklahoma. Up next, how much weather disasters have cost the United States so far this year. And looking out there with a live cam, we're starting at 79 degrees this morning. A little hot, but it's going to be hotter in the afternoon. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 9th of August. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're hanging on, especially if you have to work out there in the heat. Um, hats off to you and hope you're taking all the precautions. 25 degrees from where we are right now is what the high is going to be later on this afternoon. Wow. So yeah, it is definitely warm out there right now. We've got a lot of clear skies. We'll have a couple of morning clouds like we had yesterday and temperature stands at an official 80 dew points at 69, which that is better than yesterday when dew points were up around 73 or so. Now we still do have some areas, say uh, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, that have those higher dew points, but that's a little bit more pleasant when you step outside this morning. Southerly wind at 11 miles per hour. Heat index right now, 84 Canyon Lake, uh, 83 at the airport. Same thing at Castroville right now. Feels like 86 in Gonzales. Mold is on the low side. Update account will come out in a couple of hours. Of course, we still have the extreme uh, heat at warnings posted. The heat advisories posted and then the red flag warnings. This is probably the mo most important graphic on here because one thing not only is still in effect, but it's also been expanded again and all but our extreme southeastern counties are under this red flag warning for the extremely high fire danger, especially later on this afternoon as well as going into the evening when the humidity is the lowest and the wind does start to pick up somewhat. And of course, outdoor burn bans basically everywhere. There are a couple of minor exceptions, but just burning is not a good idea at all. Warm and humid this morning and then again 105. Now the record's 106. It's going to be close to it. We did hit the record yesterday with the 105 and then we stay at 105 pretty much the rest of the week and near record each and every day. Then going into next week, perhaps a degree or two lower, but we're not really seeing any substantial changes to this overall weather pattern. We'll see if there's anything like rain that we can try and scare up sometime next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Flashing lights over here, Mike. 10 at Frio, not a great shot, but let's get a wider look and find out what's going on there because it does appear a crash has uh, taken place in the eastbound lanes along I-10. Now, this is a very busy spot. Although the shot is not clear, but you're starting to see a lot of that traffic pick up out there. It's tough to see how many vehicles may be involved or if there are any paramedics out there. I'll keep a close eye on the scene and let's keep our fingers crossed. There are no injuries that will be reported, but let's give you a look at the map because you see that little bit of buildup that's taking place out there. This is again in the eastbound lanes, but that buildup is actually it looks like it's shaping up in the westbound lane. So we'll find out exactly if uh, whether or not this is in the eastbound lanes. According to TxDOT, that's what they are reporting. We will get that confirmed through our friends at TransGuide. Giving you a wide look now at the map. Thankfully, no other issues to report. I did see that there's still a stretch of red that is building along Loop 16 to 4 in the westbound lanes. Traffic moving at 14 miles per hour. Remember, they had shut down the westbound lanes overnight due to some work for the Loop 16 to 4 North Expansion Project. I'll find out if there are any delays here, but thankfully, no delays if you're traveling into the Alamo City. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton, 28 minutes at this hour along 37 northbound, 30 minutes along US 90 eastbound. If you are heading in from Castroville and that arrival from Lytle should be about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound. Back here on Transguide, we'll see what's going on and if uh, Transguide can tell us any more details about this, I'll have an update for you coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Not a late breaking news. There's no sleeping for some people at one apartment complex. They woke up to the sound of gunfire. Katrina Weber is live in the 1900 block of Horal Street near Marbuck Road. And Katrina, we understand some of that gunfire came especially close to a few people. 
Well, that's right. The police tell us that the gunfire hit two apartments here. Luckily, no one injured. Uh, everyone escaped injury, including a child. But the gunfire did hit a water pipe. And so right now we have a cleanup going on. It looks like some friends have come over to help the woman who lives here uh, mop up all this water. Her apartment flooded because the gunfire, again, did hit and break a water pipe, apparently. Now, this started about 4 o'clock this morning. The woman who lives here told police she didn't know the shooter. Someone knocked on her door. She looked at the person, didn't recognize that person, closed the door, and she says moments later, that's when all this gunfire erupted. Police believe that person had a rifle firing into this apartment. Now, some of the bullets then went into the apartment just uh, right next door, behind this, uh, hitting a bedroom where a child was asleep. But again, police say that no people were hit by that gunfire. The woman in the original apartment and her dogs uh, both safe, as well as the people in the apartment next door. Police have no idea why this apartment was targeted for the gunfire, and they have not at this point found that shooter uh, who uh, they, they didn't even uh, offer a description of the person who uh, they believe fired into this apartment. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. The American Meteorological Society, or AMS, is holding its annual meeting this week. Officials will give their latest findings on the severe weather the nation has endured over the past few years. And as seen as John Lawrence reports, they say these storms, floods, and tornadoes have cost the U.S. major money. Down trees and significant damage in parts of Massachusetts after at least two tornadoes tore through the state Tuesday, according to the National Weather Service. Roughly 1,700 miles to the west in Oklahoma. I was sitting on my couch just watching TikTok and uh, I felt something. It felt like kind of like a boom. In Tunnel, Oklahoma, heavy gusts from a storm picked up a mobile home and sent it crashing into a parked car. Crews are also dealing with fallen power lines. Just having to clean up all the damage, you know, because we got damage to our our fences over there too. So far this year, the U.S. has had 15 disasters that have each resulted in more than $1 billion worth of damage. According to the National Centers for Environmental Information, that's the most billion-dollar disasters in a single year since it began tracking these events in 1980. This tree is completely uprooted going off to the northeast. The storm is going this way, but if you go to the other side of the street, you see snapped and topped and twisted and mangled trees over there. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the damage done by the wrath of Mother Nature cost at least $177 billion in 2022 and more than a trillion between 2016 and 2022. I'm 55 years old and I've never seen a tornado or straight line winds like this before in my life and I've lived here for that long. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Over in Houston, a family is grieving the loss of a three-month-old baby boy left inside a car in the parking lot of the Harris Center for Mental Health. Police are still trying to nail down a timeline for how long the baby was left alone in the car. Investigators confirmed the woman got out of the car with her four-year-old child, and the three-month-old was left behind. As the woman was leaving the clinic, police say she noticed her unresponsive son inside the car and took him into the clinic. The baby was taken to an area hospital where he ultimately died. According to state law, it's a misdemeanor to leave a child younger than seven alone in a car for more than five minutes. Now that the Food and Drug Administration has approved a pill to treat postpartum depression, the makers of the drug are now trying to figure out how much it will cost. Sage Therapeutics and Biogen are still debating the price. The FDA okayed that drug, Zero Nolan, last Friday, and it is supposed to become available through prescription later this year. A spokesperson for Sage Therapeutics says more than half of all U.S. births are covered by insurance and hopes women who need the drug will not have to pay much out of pocket. The remaining births are covered through Medicaid, and patients should have little to no cost. Bush Light is hosting a racetrack wedding in Las Vegas, and there's no time for cold feet because one lucky couple will tie the knot in under 15 seconds from start to finish. The Bush Light Pit Stop wedding will happen during Kevin Harvick's Pit Stop October 15th in recognition of where the Bush Light driver exchanged vows back in 2001. 80,000 fans will witness the ceremony, and the beloved Bush guy will be the ordained minister of the ceremony. There he is, looking fantastic in that plaid shirt. For a chance of a win, 
for a chance to win rather, couples age 21 and up must post on social media telling the brand why they deserve a chance to win. The deadline for entries is coming up on August 22nd. Looks fun. Time now, 539 and 79 degrees for now. Is it too early for pumpkin spice? Krispy Kreme doesn't think so. We'll tell you about some new donut flavors out today. And do you need some extra cash? How Northeast ISD could use your help with driving school buses. We're going to tell you how much it pays, including a sign-on bonus. And outside with live cam, hovering right around 80 degrees, taking a look at one of the freeway interchanges here in town. Another steamy morning here in South Texas. Uh, Stevens tracking an incident at I-10 and Frio. We'll get an update coming up in a matter of minutes. In your morning consumer headlines, Chrysler is recalling nearly 45,000 vehicles because their airbags may not deploy properly. The problem is a piece of interior trim that could interfere with the airbag. Affected vehicles include current and last year model Jeep Wagoneers and Grand Wagoneers. Any Chrysler dealer can inspect the vehicles and correct the problem at no charge. Chrysler is planning to mail letters to all owners of the affected vehicles on September 22nd. All right, keep in mind it's August 9th. Krispy Kreme is kicking off fall a little early with a line of pumpkin spice donuts. Starting today, the donut chain is offering a line of pumpkin Pumpkiny, oh yeah, pumpkiny flavors, yeah. including the new pumpkin spice cheesecake swirl donut and the pumpkin spice maple pecan donut. There are also pumpkin spice lattes and coffee for the season. The pumpkin spice flavors, all Krispy Kreme stores, and some are available at select grocery stores. 7-Eleven was the first offer of the treat typically reserved for fall by introducing a lineup of pumpkin spice beverages. And that happened on Monday. Okay, I'm ready for cooler weather, but you the, know. <laughs> not quite this. Not quite this. Not for, yet. For, let's do it in order. Cooler yeah. temperatures, and then we'll start thinking about yes. autumn. Yes. I am totally with you on that. 944, 89, uh, se sorry, 79 degrees. <laughs> the Animal Defense League is up next with a pet that needs a cool new home. And checking Trans Guy, there's uh, an incident uh, at 10 and Frio. Looks like it may have just cleared up, but we'll confirm with Stephen coming up. Well, this is the cutest little black and white kid and the most gorgeous green eyes. And Nadia is here from the Animal Defense League. Who is this little one? So this is Reebok. He's just a domestic short hair little fella. And we're thinking he's about three to four months old. Um, so yeah, he's super sweet. And I've always said I love a, a black cat with green eyes, but this, when he's, you know, half face black, he's got that little white blaze going up his nose and those beautiful green eyes on this guy. And even for being in the studio here, which usually cats aren't real keen on, he's just very laid back. He's a sweet little guy. Just, okay, and look at those little wide eyes. What's going on there, buddy? Okay, what you got going on? So for the month of August, we actually have coffee for a cause. So we partnered up with our friends from Tandem San Antonio, and they're going to be making a pastachio latte. And for All every... Puns in here, so. <laughs> and for every pastachio, latte sold whether it's ice or hot they're gonna give us one dollar back oh, um, wonderful. so that's an amazing opportunity for y'all to um, go have a latte it's amazing coffee there and then on August 11 we're actually gonna have an event at Roadmap Brewery right here on Broadway and they're gonna be giving us a percentage of their sales as well oh wonderful two opportunities to uh, help out enjoy a nice little beverage and help out all the uh, puppies and kitties over there and if you'd like to adopt a little Reebok and get just as sweet as can be or some of the other about how many? A hundred, couple of hundred dogs and cats out there <laughs> at the Animal Defense League. Just head on over to 11300 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. Pet Smart over there on Four Winds or give them a call at 655-1481, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Things look a lot better over here. I-10 at Frio, that crash that we talked about earlier has cleared out. Let's get a wider look at TransGuide. You can see things are a lot smooth, but the uh, shot's still a little bit grainy out there. But watch out, we did have first responders there at the lower level. Let's get you to our map, because what we were learned from after talking to our friends at TransGuide, at least one of those lanes was blocked, and it was heading along I-10 eastbound. I did see a little bit of a buildup in the westbound lanes, but uh, that wasn't because of the crash that we saw out here. And just remember that if anytime you see those flashing lights, be be sure to move over or slow down. And again, the good news is that is cleared out. 
wide look at the map does show that we still have a lot of construction to look forward to today and things seem to be moving a lot better along loop 1604. I did see a little bit of stretch of red out there. Wasn't sure if it was because of the full closure of the westbound main lanes, but speaking of those full closures, we have more to look forward to. I 10 over on the east side of San Antonio. We will see a full closure beginning on Friday, August 11th. That work will wrap on Monday, August 14th. This is overnight, so 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, we will see that closure of I-10 and the Loop 410 interchange. All the eastbound and westbound traffic will be diverted to the frontage road. So just know before you go, head over to ksat.com slash traffic. There is a full list of all the closures taking place uh, throughout the month of August, so just plan ahead. But thankfully here, you won't have to plan for much. Just watch out anytime you see a situation on one of the main lanes. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. This is probably that. way before your time. Do you remember Spuds McKenzie? No. Yeah. Was that was it for a beer? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I believe it was Budweiser. Budweiser. But I will was say, I like Micopedia. I feel like I got <laughs> a, a, a lot from you yeah. over Steph, here. I, Steph brought it up when she saw it. Oh, yeah, picture. it looks like Spuds Wombles. McKenzie. Wombles. Wombles Terrier. Terrier. And what you really can't see and what we point out, he's got his Jeez. his little booties on. Oh, there. how okay. cute! Got his feet going for a walk. So, because you know that pavement and the asphalt, it, you you know, cook an egg on that. But yeah, he is uh, hopefully finding some shade and lots of water there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got a lot of clear skies, beautiful view of the uh, skyline. We'll see a couple of clouds developing later on this morning. This is from Texas A&M Forest Service and the uh, fire risk in Basically, the whole state has a, a risk of fire, but in our area and then from Austin, Northern Hill Country up to the north is the, the highest fire danger around here. But you just really have to take it easy with that lower humidity in the afternoon as the winds pick up later on in the afternoon, early evening hours. And of course, all the vegetation out there, nobody's had any rain, it seems like in forever. So everything is just uh, tinder dry. 80 Castroville at the airport, Canyon Lake. Otherwise, the uh, 70s elsewhere will fluctuate another couple of degrees here and there. Make it back up through the 80s pretty quickly this morning, up to 93 at noon. And then we're going to be topping off today at 105. We hit 105 yesterday. That was a record today. The current record is 106. So obviously, it's going to be really, really close to it. No clouds showing up as of right now. And up to the north of us, of course, a couple of days ago, we had all the uh, severe weather there along the Atlantic seaboard and up in New England. And then yesterday, there was another round in the south. And this batch of energy right here in these storms, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, those are going to work their way into the Mid-South. So you want to watch it if you have any uh, travel plans, say, around Memphis, Nashville, anywhere around there later on today. Forecast. Huh, nothing is changing in the next few days. Still going to stay at 105s all the way through the rest of the week. And then, yeah, temperatures will come down maybe a degree or two going into next week. But we're still looking at triple digits all the way through there and really no rain in sight. Wombles the dog, our producer reminded us that's also the breed of dog in the Target ads. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, that's yes. true. And, yeah. and Spuds McKenzie was doing uh, promos for Bud Light back in the day. Oh, it was Bud way, Light. Way, back when, yeah. And, just, and that was the type of dog, I believe, that uh, General Patton That is have, so. my understanding as well. All this bull terrier <laughs> 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 trivia that we have. Popular <laughs> dog there. 553, 79 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, four, nine, three, Fireball five, Deli four, five, seven, two, six, Fireball eight. Cash five numbers, one, three, 12, 22, 35, Mega Millions, and somebody won the big jackpot over in Florida. 13, 19, 20, 32, 33, Mega Ball 14, Mega Plier two. Coming up here on GMA, we have a winner. One lucky person in America is waking up a billionaire this morning after winning the largest Mega Millions jackpot in history. We're live at the grocery store where that winning ticket was sold. Also, we are tracking the fire emergency in Maui. People jumping into the harbor to escape the flames, at least a thousand acres so far, and folks getting the message, get out now. Plus, the tornadoes from Colorado to Massachusetts, one even near Cape Cod. The threat is on the move, I'll tell you where it moves, and also we have a new headline on Wigovi, a study that found that there are other benefits to the weight loss drug. So Dr. Ashton is gonna break that down for us. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. 
Don't forget to get your tickets for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. They're on sale now, and you can find that information on KSAT.com. Just scan the QR code to see all your ticket options. It kicks off August 25th, followed by our triple header on Saturday the 26th. We will see you there. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, a hot, dry summer we've been having means a burn ban is now in effect across Bear County. When it could end coming up on GMSA. Plus, a 19-year-old who killed a man during last year's MLK Day celebration will spend decades behind bars. We're inside the courtroom still ahead. And Trans Guy looking at 281 and Loop 410, a normally very busy spot as the morning commute gets underway. And we'll talk to Stephen after the break.